Okay, so it's the 12th of March, 2024, only about 20 days since our last meeting, actually, as Yuhan was pointing out to me. So uh, not not a lot of time for new stuff to happen, but I, I think that things have been going on in the background, which is great. So welcome to the meeting. Um, there was, for those of you who haven't followed it, there was a issue posted earlier by Yuhang. Thank you very much, Yuhang to which I haven't added anything um, in the meantime, but hopefully it covers the basics. And if you have any additions, slide decks, anything you want to share, which you know, after the meeting or during, you can just drag those things right here as comments there. Should be pretty straightforward. Um, I think Adrian, you sent around a deck just before the meeting, which is great. So I think we'll come to that first, most likely, because um, often the conversations we have are driven by what you guys have found. So. <laughs> Um, I think we will focus on you know, any new data since the last meeting, and um, hopefully some of the chemists on the call will be happy to say a little bit about new molecules that they have made. Um, so with that said, shall we start traditionally by going to Warwick for any updates on measurements of compounds? Adrian, is that all right? I saw that you have- Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Fantastic. Right. Okay. So if I share my screen. Okay, is that right for everyone? Yeah. Okay. So um, a, a fairly short update, um, but uh, we've made some progress with some of the compounds that you hang has synthesized. Um, and these are the uh, pyrozolipyrimidines um, that were first identified by Hamid et al. Um, and uh, further characterized as such as inhibitors of Pseudomonas aeruginosa mercy. So if I go to my next slide, said. Right, so again, we can all see that? Yep. So um, I basically started uh, working on these compounds uh, before the last meeting in January, uh, well, late January, February. And the the first thing that um, struck me is that these particular compounds were considerably more potent than mm -hmm. anything I thus had to deal with that has been sent to us. Um, and so typically when we run an IC50, uh, basically we work between about 0.49 and 2000 micromolar uh, in sequential doubling dilutions. And the plot you see in front of you is uh, a composite of two data sets. Um, the data set in purple will be the data set that I would have presented at the last meeting for this particular compound. And uh, as you can see, the purple points peter out at about 50% inhibition. Um, and clearly that's not going to be sufficient data to compute an accurate IC50 for this particular compound. So. Um, we reevaluated the same compound at the same concentration range, but 100 fold diluted. And those are the sort of the dark pink data. Um, I've amalgamated both uh, data sets and basically treated them as one and uh, fitted them to a four parameter model designed to estimate the maximum and minimum responses. Um, the IC50 and the Hill coefficient. And um, I've now completed all six compounds that we've been sent recently. And next slide basically um, addresses that. So we have six uh, pyrimidine compounds that we've tested. Um, they have IC50 values that vary between 115 nanomolar up to 4.8 micromolar. Um, I haven't had the chance to properly sit down and look at exactly what this means in structure activity relationships, and that's probably more for you than for me. Um, I do have to, still have to uh, take the data and convert them to Ki values. Um, but certainly they, they do bind tightly in the nanomolar range. The origin of these compounds, which is Hamid et al., um, 
those compounds that I know are common to that paper and this. So, for example, bottom row left hand uh, box or left left hand graph. Uh, we get IC fifties that are considerably higher than the Hamid paper, where we can make comparisons. Um, drilling down as to why this may be so, there are differences in the way assays are performed. Um, principally, this data is initial rate data, and the Hamid data for these particular compounds, as far as I can tell, reading their supplementary section wasn't, and that is significant. Um, but uh, also, um, the enzyme concentration we used here is 15 nanomolar. They got uh, value values working at three nanomolar mercy, um, and again, that might be an issue. Uh, we might actually have to change the assay format to something like that, to luminescence or something like that, to actually get down that far. Um, but we do, like I say, have sufficient data to calculate KI, KIs because we've previously established the kinetics of the enzyme. And, well, here is the data. The, the, the data is there really for, for you now to uh, uh, see what you can make of it. And um, that's it at the minute. Um, we are expecting another shipment of these compounds. Um, and the only other thing I would say about that is that um, if you can contact us as to exactly when you want to send them, because at the moment we still have a bit of a supply problem with um, substrates at the moment, which we're at the moment addressing. And you, Hand, what did you want to ask? Oh, sorry. Uh, I think I think I think the bottom left compound is not uh, in the Hamid paper. It's a deriv uh, it's a uh, derivative. The the steel center was converted. Uh, the WYH eighty seven one. Uh, the top, the top right uh, compound was actually the compound oh. thirteen in the Hamid paper. Okay, so that can also question. explain why the potency was higher than than the seventy seven. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Okay. Thank uh, right. Okay. Do you, shall I stop sharing? Well, that's it's. I mean, it's interesting to have that on screen. I mean, the um, yeah, I mean, it, you know, as an internal check of the data, you're seeing, I think, the right trend the top left compound and bottom middle are in antimers. And I think that's the right trend, right? You hang that one is significantly more active than the other. So that's an internal check that things are fine. And um, we are pretty sure that the bottom right compound. I mean, no, no particular surprise that's less active. Uh, the, the group was added in order to try and add that guanidinium group. So, um, so yeah, no, no, not a big surprise. I mean, I guess yeah, the fact that the the top left compound, the most potent, is 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 still you know at least an order of magnitude different from the paper, it is an issue. But as long as the rank order is similar, that's I guess what's what matters here. So you hang, it's going to be important to you know verify these data versus the published data and check that the same kind of order is in place right yeah yep yeah i agree with that okay and yes fresh stock of top left compound coming so it will be useful as a, a kind of internal control uh, for when we when we do this um these weren't the compounds that you were particularly worried about the stability of. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's anything with a free amine um, we we're worried about, and and the the the, the ones coming with the guanidinium and pyridinium groups on, we're we're just um, yeah, we would rather get those done fresh rather than have any doubts about them. Okay. So so, so the, the coordination between you and shipping the compounds and getting them tested, if we can minimize the the time there, that would help. I think. Yeah, that's why I was flagging at supply to, to make sure yeah. that we have sufficient in stock to do the compounds essentially within a day of delivery. Yep. Yep. All right. Great. Thank you. Um, any other comments about this? I mean, I know that, Joe, you've often been talking about the 
the uh, trying to get data that you know kind of are consistent with the Hamid paper. Do you have any any comments on this? Uh, not no, not really. Um, you know, as as Adrian pointed out, I guess. I mean, it, there's different assays. The enzyme concentration definitely is fivefold lower, so it's obviously going to be easier maybe to inhibit. Um, but no, I don't know really specifically about that. But I did want to ask uh, Adrian if he has any kind of timeline for when you might be able to do the Pseudomonas D assay on these compounds, because that was one of the things we were looking at for multi-targeting. Merge is probably a little less problem because we have some of the substrate in stock. Um, I mean, the situation in general, Warwick, is we are slowly running out of substrates and we are going to have to... Uh, devote a significant amount of time to restoring the stock we've got, not just supporting this particular project, but others as well. Um, I would imagine as far as looking at Murdi for this set of six, um, I don't want to become a hostage to fortune particularly, but um, I will be hoping that we can get those done, or at least something done with them in the next month. Okay. I mean, this is, you know, again, we're trying to wrap up this work. I mean, I talked with Ham Hill at AstraZeneca. I happened to be on site there uh, last week. I mean, they're still wondering kind of what's happened when they gave these compounds to us. Um, so it would be really nice if we can wrap this story up. I think it should be a priority well, now that we're okay. almost however many years we are in process here on this particular project. So... And is there any chance to to you don't have get... an AZ team at your disposal, unfortunately. I wish you did, but you only got me. Uh, so I am doing my best. I understand. I understand that. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Adrian. That was great. So last and, time we were uh, talking about testing out some of these compounds yeah. for MICs. Yes. Which ones are the ones that we want to move forward? Well, um, so, all right. The I mean, so for some of these compounds, you know, we the ones that are in the Hamid paper, we are we know that they only work in the in the the Tulsi mutants, right? In the knockdowns. So, the, the testing the most potent compounds here um, versus wild type and versus you know efflux deficient would be helpful as a check. The compounds that we are particularly interested in are the ones that carry these groups that that are supposed to help with accumulation and that's the that one unfortunately the one on the bottom right there that carries the guanidinium group mm -hmm. um but it's not very potent right so so the chance of seeing something aren't great but um what we are hoping is that the ones that yu hang is about to deliver okay. would be um yeah would 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 be better and we'll need to have them evaluate that i think well i mean it depends on how difficult the assay is right so if if we are uh, 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 you know waiting for a while to do in these evaluations versus the compounds you hang sending then um we we could in the meantime try and do mic measurements yeah, yeah. it depends on how difficult they are and how expensive and you know the MIT so what we're hoping in an ideal world, right? In an ideal world, we have compounds that are potent in vitro, uh, carrying some of these groups, and we measure them against wild type, and they show better activity yeah. than the original hemi compounds. So no, I mean technically speaking, no, the MICs aren't difficult in themselves. But the one, the one, the one question that would arise is if you are worried about the stability of these compounds, given what you said about the amine, and given that they're going to be hanging around at thirty-seven degrees. Mm -hmm in a fairly complex medium overnight. Um, to what extent are you worried that whatever you see is a result of the compound or what you're worried it might actually break down or be converted to, if it's that unstable? Yeah, no, it's not really stability. It's not as if the compounds are breaking apart. Um, it's that some of the compounds are carrying primary amines. That's one of the the, the moieties that's um, meant to help according to the entryway criteria, right, yeah. for accumulation. And that if we leave those compounds lingering around in the lab exposed to air, they can often oxidize on the yeah. amine. So um, if if we can just minimize that by 
you know, not let them linger around in the presence of air, then then that helps. We're not expecting them to break down in buffer or anything like that. Okay. Yeah. So just to re remove any any possibility that you know, if the compound is sitting around in the lab for a month, that 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 we've accidentally converted to something else. But if we test it reasonably freshly, you know, wh when it's delivered and we don't leave it hanging around too much in air or at room temperature in solution for days on end, then if, I'm yeah. sure everything will be all right. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. It's, it's about a shipment. So like we, we want to prepare all samples together, then we make the aiming uh, uh, at the last, uh, uh, we, we, uh, we make the aiming before we ship. Then everything else we made, just uh, uh, and, and sh gather them together and ship. That's all. That's why we are trying to say, oh, these compounds need to be protected. It's, it's more about amines. It's not other guanidinium pyridinium. They they are fine. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the notion maybe of linking some of these things to sidera forms. Um. The, yes. So it, that's always possible. Just synthetically more difficult. If you have the in vitro potency, um, mm -hmm. um, and you have a a vehicle for getting it across a membrane, I mean that seems a logical thing to have a look at. Yeah, for sure. Just just synthetically slightly more demanding. That's all. But yeah, for sure. Um, so I mean, the strategy we're taking at the moment is to is to modify trivial, well, not trivially, but but do a small scale modification of the core molecule, which is what you Hank's currently doing to try and improve accumulation. Um, adding a sidera for that, that's typically a more complicated moiety. That's all. But by no means impossible. AZ reported a sidera for in the Hemid paper on one of these compounds. Do you, okay, we'll look at that. Do you remember what, yeah. that, do you remember what it was offhand? Uh, no, I think it was, uh, what's it, hydroxy, like a hydroxyquinolone or pyridone, something like that. It's an iron chelator. Okay, great. We'll look at that. Yeah. I didn't the pick paper. that up. It's okay, in the great. paper. It's in the paper. All right. Um, so, uh, Laura, did you have anything you wanted to ask, uh, did you mention about soaking or crystals or anything? Any updates? I know it's only been 20 days. So, so. I'm testing the last crystals I have grown for equal and you're seeing the presence of compounds like as we <laughs> testing some um but nothing is uh diffracting better like the better diffraction is eight and strings um yeah so right. it doesn't seem to be the way to go but i am gonna set up new crystal place for pseudomonas and equal and you see with these uh potent compounds uh 77, 25, 9, and 78. The one that we just saw on the uh, on alien essays. Um, I will test those four compounds in co-crystallization with the two mirrors that I got um, and see if we get anything. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Fingers crossed. <laughs> um uh, Guy, I don't know if you wanted to update everybody on anything you were doing with the compounds for the, the TB series. I mean, compounds that you're hoping to ship to Laura. Were you happy to say anything about them? Uh, yes. So basically, um, I finished the things of the first series of compounds. Uh, I made uh, 16 or 17 compounds, if I'm not, if I'm not wrong. Uh, they're ready to ship. I was just uh, uh, talking with uh, Laura um, like a couple of minutes ago. And uh, probably gonna send them tomorrow or later today, and uh, yeah, she's just uh, uh, about to start the TB testing as well. So hopefully we're gonna have some results in the coming uh, weeks or months. Yeah, right. And just to remind yeah. everybody, these are derivatives mm -hmm. of some of the atom-wise type structures we've been looking at before, and uh, varied according to a modeling analysis you've been doing to try to make them mm -hmm. fit better. Yeah. All right. Great. So there's a test of that. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Um, Yu Hang, just because we're talking about chemistry, uh, did you have anything you wanted to share on the on the next tranche of compounds that like to come through? I don't know if you have uh, yes, yes. Well, uh, we uh, can we delay that a little bit because I'm having issues with logging, so I can't put the <laughs> I can't put the uh, uh, 
the diagram on it. Uh, one minute, like maybe maybe you can guys can talk something else. <laughs> talk <laughs> amongst ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Fine. Uh, Sorry um, about that. Yeah. Was the 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 NEU team uh, gave a nice update last time of synthetic targets that they're looking at. Um, I didn't know if anyone from that team wanted to update us. I, I guess not much has happened since last time. Um, um, unless something has changed. I, I can, think uh, Lily's, Lily's trying to unmute now. Yeah. Or okay. Sam has. Um, yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm working with, um, with Tommy. Um, there's also building work going on right next door, so hopefully you can hear me. Um, yeah. Basically, well, we've managed to get the final couple of reactions are working. We've um, we've got final compound. We're just, we're just struggling a little bit with purification at the moment in terms of Tommy's targets. All right, is it, is it the thing that I'm showing on the screen? Is the yeah, it's, it's the two compounds on the right hand side. Um, so so the, those those basic nitrogens are causing a few problems with purification. Um, mm -hmm. And Tommy's new to chromatography, and we're working on a smallish scale. But he's also had spring break and a week off sick. So since in the twenty days, we've not <laughs> we've not had many days to to work with. Right? Doesn't everyone have a week off sick after spring break? Isn't that? <laughs> it was before, actually. Yeah, it was before. Okay. The... <laughs> really? uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Um. And the design is based on on these compounds, right? Yeah. Okay. These are ones that were originally suggested by NEU and Joe. And it's these are these are based on these designs, but okay, got it. Okay, fantastic. And and upon completion, is the idea that these will be shipped out to, for example, Warwick? Yeah, that's exactly the idea. Um, we will ship them out to Warwick. They're still going to AstraZeneca to get Admi, so obviously yeah. we'll share that once we have that. Also, um, Lily, did you want to just mention what's happening? With the other yeah. compounds, I, yeah, I, yeah, I can. So uh, I'm working with the. Uh, like, can I share my? I can share my screen. <laughs> so can can you uh, see my uh, uh, screen? Yep. Uh, so I'm working on compound uh, MO8, and these are thiophene. Um, thiophene pyrimidines, and I'm working with Olaya, uh, Olivia. Uh, so we have a progress. We made the final compound, and that's a this is the final compound. And we have around 24 milligram as pure uh, NMR and LCMS. Uh, we checked it, so it's pure. I just uh, uh, want to know how much uh, should we ship it? Like, if we want to ship the compound for biological activity. Is there any uh, so uh, and for uh, for another compound, this compound uh, we also made this compound, but uh, we need to do another column because uh, the first column is have some impurities, mm -hmm. so it is less than ninety five percent pure. So uh, we need to do one more column, and then mm -hmm. it, it will be ready to ship to. So this chemistry is working, uh, but if we had the basic nitrogen here. This have a, just uh, just like the Sam said, it's a purification issue. Uh, but if we don't have a basic nitrogen, the chemistry is working fine, and um, uh, yeah, we can uh, we can start uh, labeling the compound. If, uh, but ju just like to you know how much we can uh, for the biological data, we need need the compounds. So that's a question for the work team. Yeah, how much if you want to measure these compounds in a, in the enzymatic assay? I guess how much would you need? Uh, Adrian, you're Adrian. muted currently. Right, right. Sorry. Um, well, five to ten milligrams would would uh, be fine. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Could you just go back to the the first compound you shared? Sorry, the structures that were the inspiration for this MO eight or whatever it was. This one? Yeah, so these ones, um, yeah, they came from the original set. And um, when we suggested buying or making variants of these, 
The only comment that Ben Perry had about these, and I, this is a MedCam question, is just be careful of molecules where you've got an aromatic ring with a sulfur and a CH2 adjacent to it, because those are usually promiscuous covalent hits. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we took that on board and said, well, okay, if we get some decent compounds, we're going to have to deal with that. Is that kind of where you're at thinking that, well, if these perform well, we'll have to then maybe, you know, uh, yeah, deal with the idea that maybe these are going to be covalent hits and maybe promiscuous. I'll probably take that one. Um, yeah. So the, I think actually, Lilith, is there more structures above this too? If you scroll up in your document? No. Okay. That's okay. Um, so the idea here was to just start doing some general exploration to see what we could do. Um, I'm going to yeah. point out, so like M17, um, We've obviously gotten rid of the the sulfur linkage, and one of the ideas that we have is to go back and explore, um, you know, a thioether, maybe just an ether. Mm -hmm. um, the the uh, nitrogen linker is kind of our our easiest get at this moment in time, and so that's kind of why we went that route first. Um, mm -hmm. And we also didn't love the fact that that structure on the left is as could be zwitterion would be a zwitterion, so we, that's why the the acid's gone. Mm -hmm. um, Certainly, as we start to do this and, and gets, get these in front of Adrian and in Adrian's hands, then the idea would be to, yes, certainly look at different scaffolds that we could work with that would maybe remove that that biophene, for want of a better description, yeah. um, and scaffold hub away from the thionopyrimidine. But um, yeah, I mean, at the moment, we're just trying to do some chemistry with the undergrads, so. Yep. Yeah, great. See what great. we can do at that kind of left-hand piece. Sure. Um, and then yeah. the other thing I would also note is MO2 kind of has quite a different sort of attachment point, which is interesting. Mm. But, um, yeah, I'm not really sure how we're going to factor that in at this point, point in time. Yeah. All right. In in terms of how promiscuous these things are, because, I mean, I recognize these from the anamine screen. Mm. Um they would have got through that um, because you know, they, we would have had to show and did show that uh, they didn't interfere with the coupling system that we were working with. In other words, they didn't significantly impact all strategy peroxidase, anti-ease oxidase and pure nucleoside phosphorylase. Ergo, there is some inbuilt selectivity in them. Um, so I don't think you... Necessarily because you have a good leaving group with a, uh, potentially on some of them that they necessarily go around isolating everything. They don't uh, at all. Um, so I, I would probably be encouraged by that fact mm -hmm. um, that it is likely that they probably are actually on target in the confines of the assays we work with. Yeah. Thank you. All right, yeah, thanks for that. Looks good. Uh, all right. Um, for uh, for those of you who don't know, Margot, who's on the call, is starting a project in the lab now um, to work with Guy on some of the, the same compound series, or, you know, derived from the original atomized compounds. And, and uh, I'm sure she'll report back in a, in a future meeting because she's only just started. Um, for those of the rest of you, oh, you hang have you managed to fix your computer issue or are you still working on it? Uh, yeah, I fixed it. Uh, it's now it's on. GitHub. Okay. Do you want to just briefly say something about what you're working on right now? Yeah, sure. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, so I've been, I've been working on getting the right conditions done. I have this, uh, Pyrazola pyramid uh, aiming derivative core, uh, as commercial available, but, uh, I can't really get uh previously I can't really get my uh this perizole pyramid uh per, sorry the perizole perizolamine on on it so I started to use some uh find some conditions that that are similar to this system and uh, I managed to get uh I managed to get find these two conditions that's working for the primary amine or uh that that can actually uh finish this, uh, complete this SNAR process, uh, uh, then 
so, so I'm uh, I'm using so I'm using this uh conditions uh for the actual system I'm uh I'm doing uh uh the thing is uh when I get this compound I I'm not sure whether it actually got this one because it's not quite detectable on LMS and uh, uh and the purification was uh not quite good it's stuck in the column whatever uh and the solubility was quite questionable because it was soluble in dmso but uh, it can't really uh be uh soluble in methanol or acid nitrile or other stuff and uh, a, a normal phase column uh even though it's uh, amino uh, uh uh amino column then it's not so, which is not supposed to track it, but it still got tracked in the in the column, which means we I probably need to explore some other ways to purify it. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, I need to I also need to verify the uh, active activity so, uh, reactivity of this aiming. So whether the normal pyridylation conditions can be applied to it. And the guanidylation conditions can be applied to it. Uh, uh, I've uh, I've managed to take it out of the system and uh, do the guanidylation at the moment. Uh, and the pyridyl as for the pyridylation, I haven't managed to get I haven't managed to get the conditions right until uh, recent last week, uh, which you guys can see here. I'm using different types of amines. Uh, 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 aliphatic amines and uh, conjugated amines. And uh, I found I found several uh, patterns and uh, papers that I, I believe, and I believe this condition was the best uh, for both of the systems. The microwave very uh, very quick, just one, uh, one hour, uh, 1.5 hour will be done. Uh, for conventional heating, probably not a good choice because when I when I when I outsmashed the whole process is just not quite complete. It's not gonna reach the completion for the reaction. So I'm abandoning this condition. Uh, as a backup, as a backup uh, plan, uh, to to make the pyridol uh, to make the pyridinium uh, uh, derivatives of any sort of AZ uh, AstraZeneca five nine five A uh, uh derivatives. Uh, this is the last resort we can do if none of those were working or uh, none of the above strategies were actually working. We can just go straight, uh, uh, go straight to the pyridylation using this condition. Uh, we just need to make the AZ compounds first and then just transform directly from the alcohol to the pyridyl. Uh, that's what I'm planning to do. Uh, uh, this condition has already been tested. Uh, so one hour reflux, this uh, doing it neat in pyridine will be very good condition. Uh, and transformation was very complete. Uh, that's all. Okay, great. Uh, so yeah, just to remind everybody that you know, these pyridi pyridiniums, you, hang, you need charges on all your nitrogens, right? These are pyridiniums. Uh, it's meant to help the accumulation. Um, and some of these are obvious targets to to help with that so it's all an experiment to see if that works all right thanks you hang um all right so the um uh, others on the call who haven't uh contributed yet i want to give you a chance to do so um in case there's new stuff or queries uh so bart or amy or scott um if if you want to chip in on any of these points or something different uh, sure, I can let you know what's going on. Um, we have several crystallization experiments ongoing for MIR D and C, um, uh, some with E. coli. Um, so we have some really nice crystals with UMA and AMP, PMP, and we've done this to try to tighten up the structure, put it in that closed confirmation that hopefully we can use to soak ligands in uh, and displace those other ligands and that works i'll share this with laura because <laughs> i know she's working on the e coli um several so we've set up uh co-crystallizations with the f 
zero nine, those five compounds, 19 MO2 with acinetobacter, MIR-D and pseudomonas MIR-D, two different preps of that, as well as a new compound, we receive the WYH9X uh, series. So those are ongoing and we're not seeing a lot of crystals for the MIR-D. However, for MIR-C, um, we've got crystals in the presence of M02 and F09 compound uh, and collected data recently. It wasn't great data uh, to around three angstroms and we don't see the ligand. However, what we are seeing is citrate in the active site. So my group is working on finding conditions uh, where we can, uh, where there's no salt in the crystalline to bind to the active site. So once we identify those, hopefully we can soak ligands in. So get a salt-free crystal. And hmm. that's where we're at right now. Okay, that's good to hear. Yeah, just, sorry, Joe, did you want to come in? So Scott, the citrate, is that, I'm just curious where that is. Is that kind of sitting like where maybe phosphates would be of like a TP or ADP? Yeah, that's what I was told. Uh, yeah, my okay. Group. I mean, so one of the things, I mean, so just, um, okay. <laughs> in theory, in theory, some of these, uh, those compounds, those fragments, they're all designed to actually kind of interact with this alpha helix kind of partly where, you know, phosphates are. So, you know, it yeah. may, may, maybe, you know, keep fingers crossed that if you don't, if you don't have citrate in, is that going to have more of an opportunity for those compounds to bind? So yeah. thanks. Thanks for all, thanks for all those efforts. Really appreciate no it. Yeah. We're keeping an eye on the plates to see if there's other conditions that have formed crystals that are salt free. Uh, yeah, so many variables. Thank, thank you, Scott. That's great. Um, and uh, and Bart, Amy, anything to add? No need to say anything unless you've got something you want to share. Mm -mm. I don't have anything. I'm always just uh, Scott is doing all the work. So, <laughs> yeah. and Amy does all the protein purifications. Uh, so if there's protein that someone needs, uh, ask Amy. Would be now would be a great time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And we have plenty of proteins from what I recall. So if you have any compounds, you know, feel free to send them our way and we'll get them set up. Right. I mean, any of the, I guess any of the, any of the, the well-performing uh, new compounds, including the one that Yuhang's making, which are not in the Hamid paper, would, would make sense to try. But, um, but we can send them as a group rather than individually, it seems to me. So Sounds yeah, you, we're going to need to draw up a table of, of of the compounds that have been made by you based on the Hamid compounds that have now been evaluated by Adrian, and and separate those out into into knowns versus lit versus unknowns. Yeah, we need that. We need that diagram. All right, great. Okay, um, anything anyone else wants to raise before we close? Because that's been very helpful. Still, you know, the plan here is to try to generate money to fund the project, um, uh, get some resource going. And, and you know, to my mind, it's still the, the, the two weaknesses we have is, you know, a compound that is demonstrating a new compound that is demonstrating a, a decent MIC uh, with a with a known target, ideally with a crystal structure. Seems to me that that is a little missing, well, maybe not so little missing piece from a from a convincing proposal. To, to explore any of these series um so you know with that then then we would be in a in a, in a better place i guess that's the, the comments we got back from our our expression of interest for the for the pace grant scheme in the uk um we're basically about that you know love the approach obviously significant target um need something like you know some some vaguely promising mic with a compound and ideally some structural information about what it's doing, um, which is as you might expect. So I guess these remain our priorities, but it sounds from what everyone's been saying that we're doing exactly that. So uh, Matt, so the CC4 carb, uh, I think I 
tried to tell you that I'm done with any new additions to that. So yeah. on my side, it's ready to be submitted. Yeah, we um, are tinkering with that, me and you, Hank, still. And sorry, we're being a bit slow. Um, when we need a tiny little bit of input from Warwick at the end of that proposal about if we got compounds made, what we would do with them. Um, well, can, can we send that to you guys at Warwick and, and just ask if you can add in about four or five lines just to finish that off? Because we need to tell them what we would do with the compound. Yes, sure. please. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. You hang, that's that's the action on me and you to get that finished. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Really great to see you all. Thanks for your various contributions and uh, see you in about a month, I think. Have a good day. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you. Bye. 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 Thank you very much.